Amen. And all the house agrees. Amen. Praise God. So we didn't realize we were in a series, but it seems like the Lord put us in a series starting this new year out and trying to figure out what 2022 looks like. Hopefully, hopefully it's not 2022. Also, we hope that's not the case. But it's been, it's been a, a, a little bit of a journey here as we looked at the world and we looked at the church and we looked at our church and then we turned the microscope on you guys. Uh, the last couple of weeks we talked about ha- God's looking for a few good men and women and young people. Amen. And then we talked last Sunday about some of us are having a moment. Amen. How many know Noah had a moment when he got off the ark? Yeah, we all have our moments, and we talked about that and how to get over your moment. Today I want, today I want to go to Psalms 137 and talk about singing in a strange land, singing in a strange land, because we're, kind of, we're kind of in a captivity a little bit as Christians. We, we don't seem to fit in the world anymore. Culture used to be Christian. Then we went through a stage where it was neutral. It's like, yeah, you go to church, yeah, whatever you want to do. But now, how many know we're in a stage now where it's anti-Christian? It's not neutral anymore. They're actually against us. They, they, they want to cancel us. And, and if you say what you believe, like on social media, you could get canceled just for being a Christian. You all know that, right? If you say certain things. Well, Israel was in Babylon. You should see their social media. I mean, it was tough. <laughs> you, you young people know they didn't have it then, right? You, you do? Okay. Um, so they were living in Babylon. They were in captivity for 70 years. They weren't allowed to worship. They weren't allowed to live the way they were used to. Most of them were slaves. And some had given up hope, and some had lost hope their song. 137 verse 1, singing in a strange land. Alongside Babylon's rivers, we sat on the banks. We cried and cried, remembering the good old days in Zion, back in Jerusalem. Alongside the quaking aspens, we stacked our unplayed harps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, That's where our captors demanded song, sarcastic and mocking. Sing us a happy Zion song. Oh, how could we ever sing God's song in this wasteland? How could we ever sing a song in this wasteland? What happened to the happy songs in the church? Let's get through this because i got a long ways to go and a short time to get there. Number one, you're not going to find your song in the good old days. Quit living in the past. Quit praying, oh, God, just bring back the old days. The old days are gone. And if you were honest about it, the old days were not that good anyway. We tend to remember the highlights, not the lowlights. I don't know that the good old days were really all that good. I mean, there were some great days, but we can't, well, listen, we can't go forward by living in the old days. Psalms 98 and 1 talks about this. Oh, sing to the Lord a, what kind of song? Why? For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. So let's sing a new song because we have victory. Praise God. In the Passion Translation, go ahead, sing your brand new song to the Lord. He is famous for his miracles and marvels, for he is victorious through his mighty power and holy strength. Go ahead and sing your new song to the Lord. We are living in a strange land. We're living in a Babylon anymore. But we have a new song, and we can sing it. We're being canceled, but we're still going to sing. we got to sing the new songs. Sing the new songs of Zion. I I know some of you don't like the new songs. (laughs) 
Just give me amazing grace every Sunday or I'll fly away and I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, they go together well. They're great songs. But, uh, you know, sometimes, listen, sometimes what we think is worship is really just nostalgia. And we can't worship in nostalgia. We have to worship him in spirit and in truth. I don't know about you, but I've learned how to worship God regardless of what the song is. It's not about the song. It's about the worship. Now, some songs help me worship more than other songs. And some songs I almost have to la, 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 la. Because I have to sing past them. But I'm here to tell you that whatever they're singing, whatever song is on the radio, I can still work. In fact, let me tell you this. I can worship God if there's not a song singing. Oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Here's what you got to remember. Don't attach your song to your city. We're in Babylon. We can't sing. Yes, you can. I'm in a strange place. I can't sing. Yes, you can. I'm in a place I've never been before. I can't. Yes, you can. The Lord has given you a song. Just sing it. You don't have to feel good to sing it. You have to sing it to feel good. Some of you are waiting on the move of the Spirit. You might be waiting a long time. God, how many know God tends to bless those who step by faith into what God is intending to do anyway? If you'll step in by faith, you'll be amazed at what God will do instead of just waiting for the move of the Spirit. Some of you are on the shore waiting for a mighty wave. And every few seconds, one's coming in. They're just not coming to you. Sometimes you go to it. Oh, come on. Number two, number two, number two. Your song, your song, let me make sure that's number two. No, it's not. Okay, hallelujah. Oh, I hit a button. I'm on the wrong sermon. <laughs> that was like three weeks ago. I go, whoa, what's that point? Oh, Jesus. It did sound familiar, though. <clears throat> So, so your, I already said that your song is not your city, right? Your song is not your city. Number three, your song is not measured by your talent, but by your intensity. God doesn't judge your song by how well you sing it. You can be the, you can be the world's most gifted singer and God completely ignore your work. So some of you say, well, then, Pastor, you ought to let any of us sing up here. No, God doesn't care what you sound like, but we do. <laughs> Just saying, there's that. <laughs> so for the sake of the people, maybe I am trying to please you. I don't know. But, but, but watch this. Watch this. God, God, is, God is simply saying, it's not about your talent. You, let me say it another way. You can't impress God with your talent. But you can impress God with your intensity. <laughs> if you mean business, you may be driving everyone else away. But if you're in love with Jesus and you're singing a song that's burning on your soul, he doesn't care if you're out of tune or out of touch. He just, he, when he hears that song, his presence is there, not because of the talent, but because of the intensity. Psalm 66 and 1. I've got some words, so if you like the word, you need to write this stuff down. Make a joyful. What kind? Make a joyful. Unto God all ye lands. Woo! Notice he didn't say make a noise. He said make a joyful noise. He doesn't want your complaint song. Make a joyful noise. Psalms 33 verse 1. Good people, cheer God. Right living people sound best when praising. Use guitars to reinforce your hallelujahs. Play as praise on a grand piano invent your own new song to him give him a trumpet fanfare Woo! someone ought to praise him in the house amen psalms 40 and verse 1 2 3 i waited patiently for the lord he inclined to me and heard my cry verse 2 
He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. I'm telling you, it does something to people when they see people who shouldn't be singing sing. It does something to people in the world when they know what you're going through and you're joyful anyway. They go, um, praise God, when they know your life's all messed up, but you still have a song to sing. It does something. It's a witness. It's a testimony. Give him praise. Amen. Let me put it another way. Sometimes your song is an act of defiance. Sometimes you're singing against the storm. Sometimes everything within you says give up. But something rises up in you and says, no, I've got a song to sing. And I'm going to sing it. Hallelujah. It's an act of defiance. You want to defy this world? Don't get into an argument. Just look in their face and start singing. Sing a new song to the Lord. What does it say? Life and death are in the tongue. Life and death are in the tongue. Oh, my God, I feel him. How about Psalms 149, verse 5 and 6? You've heard this psalm so many times. 149, 5 and 6. Let the high praises, I lost it. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. Your song is your weapon. Sing it on your bed. Sing it when you get up. Sing it when you go down. Sing it when you're in trial. Sing it when you're on the mountain. Sing it when you're in the valley. It's your sword. It's your shield. Praise God. My God, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 talks, I love this. It, it says um, 320. I mean, that's a good scripture. There's one for Gloria. It's about the dispensation of grace. Can you find Ephesians 320, please? <laughs> it talks. Uh, I'll tell you what it talks about. According to the power that works in. Oh, come on. Y'all know your scriptures. Well, in me or in you, depending who's reading the scripture. According to the power that works. Okay. Now, to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly all, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works. Now, why is that important? Because they can't take you away from you. Oh, you all don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> they can take away your money. They can take away your time. They can take away your job. They can take away all that stuff, but that's not where the power is. The power's not in your job. The power's not in your bank account. The power's not in your spouse. The power is not in, what, in, in, in that degree. The power is not in your good looks. The power's not in any of those things that they can take away. The power that works in you. And they can't take you away from you. Oh, you'll get that about 3 o'clock this afternoon. The power works in you. And they can't take the power from you. Give him praise this morning. Amen. Wow. Glory to God. Sometimes you just need to tell the devil, can you hear me now? Just sing. Sometimes it's called the sacrifice of praise. And sometimes your song is a sacrifice. It'll cost you something to sing. But if you'll sing, ah, God will reward your faithfulness. Come on. 
Sometimes you got to sing with everything you, listen, sometimes you got to let go of some things in order to really sing your song. Sometimes God takes things away so you can sing your song. Because some of you were singing the song about your 401k. And God wants you to sing the song about him. How many know we wrestle against principalities and powers? We don't wrestle against flesh. It's interesting in the, in the Greek Olympic games, the wrestlers would, would wrestle naked. Yeah. They were like, you know. It wasn't a, you couldn't bring anything to the game. But yourself and what you got. There's no hidden weapons. Why, why, did, why am I bringing this up? <laughs> I know you're like trying to get that image. But that's how they would wrestle. Aren't you glad that? Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't work for TV today. That would be bad. Actually, it would work, but they wouldn't allow it. Amen. Listen, listen, some, listen, sometimes when you tell, well, what is a song? Sometimes, sometimes a song is just a groan. Romans 8 talks about that groan within us. Sometimes it's, it, you know, you remember the, listen, I'm old enough to be part of the old timers. Remember how some of the old timers used to sing? Especially in the black church. Hmm. I can't do it, right? <laughs> Come on, Will, help me with this. <laughs> and they would just sit. <laughs> Come on now. And uh, there's no words. It's not, not a published song. It doesn't make any sense, but it's just something within us. And, and it's different than just saying, I'm having, a, I'm having a day or I'm having a moment. It's like, it's like, <laughs> And they would sing like that. You know, when the rabbi, you ever, ever listen to a, ever go to a, a, a rabbinic service or, a, or a, a, a go to a, a, a Jewish temple, and, and all the important stuff, whenever they do the scripture, they don't read the scripture a lot. They sing the scripture. And they would just go through the scripture, and they would sing it. Uh, I, I watched these stories when they, when they were 12 years old, and they would, they would do their... Um, Bar mitzvah, and, the, and they, had to, they had to learn how to sing this, this thing that they say to the congregation. And it doesn't matter if they say, how many believe some of them were really bad singers? And some were really good singers. It didn't matter. The point is they sang the word of God. There's something about, there's power in singing us the songs of Zion. And it doesn't matter that you're living in Babylon. It doesn't matter how dark it is around you. You need to learn how to sing the songs of Zion. Learn how to worship him regardless. Let me tell you this. You are not defined by your river. You're not defined by what flows past you. You're not defined by what seems to entrap you. You're not even defined by what's trying to drown you. You're not defined by that. You're defined by your song, and it's time to sing. I'm going to share this with you. I don't know what point this is. Anybody numbering four, something? Your song has a key. How many know, now I'm not a musician, if I'm wrong about something, just be quiet. <laughs> we'll talk later. Because <laughs> they don't know any different either. <laughs> but it, whenever, you know, if I break out into a song, first of all, you, all, you see when I break into a song, they're all like, <laughs> Where, what is he doing? They're not, it's not that, they're not wondering what song I'm singing. The first thing that pops you into your head is, what key is he in? Because <laughs> they can play the song exactly the way the song. But if I'm not in that, it's going to sound bad. 
I don't know how many times I hear him whispering, what, what key, what key? Because you can know how to play the song, but it doesn't help you if you're in the wrong key. If everyone is in a different key playing the same song, how many believe that's going to sound horrible? It's just noise, not even joyful. No, there's no way to make that joyful. I mean, God's even like, come on, get in the right key. Even God, well, yeah. There's a key, and by key, let me say it another way, there's a frequency. Keys are different frequencies, right? And we've got to know the, listen, sometimes you, you can't find that right frequency. We, we call it praying, but the heavens are like brass and you're not getting anywhere. But, but if you keep at it and keep it sooner or later, we've had services where it seemed like we were just plowing a foot of snow, not getting anywhere, and we're just, and all of a sudden we hit that boom. And the heavens just open and portals open in heaven and things and the, and the blessings just start flowing. What happened? What happened? We got in the right key. We found the frequency of heaven. Praise has a frequency. Glory to God. That's why a little lay me down to sleep prayer isn't always going to get it. Sometimes you need to spend a little time in his presence to find the right frequency of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. But it's not just about finding the frequency. Once you find the frequency, the devil can't mess with the frequency. Sometimes you, that frequency is found by speaking in another language, speaking in tongues, and all of a sudden you find that frequency because that's the Holy Spirit. You can't help but be in the right frequency if you're speaking in that heavenly language, glory to God. And once you find that frequency, the devil doesn't know what you're talking about. Whew. Glory to God. Can you hear me now, devil? He said, well, pastor, what's the frequency? It's G. O D. I don't think they got it. Bible says the deep calls to deep. Second Chronicles chapter five. You ready for some scriptures? Second Chronicles chapter five, verse three. We've got to go through this fast. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, frequency, key. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpet and cymbals and instruments and music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Whew. That's all they say. That's the whole chorus, verse, everything. Come on. I know some of you are, eh, don't, I, I, I sing those simple choruses. You better get used to it. There's one in heaven with three words, and they're the same three words. <laughs> don't get all complicated in your praise. Sometimes it's just holy, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled, filled with a, with a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. God, let's have a service where the glory fills the house and shuts up the preacher. And we're all just laying on the floor. <laughs> you know, I've said that. I want to have a service where I pray for all of you. Everyone falls out, and I'm the only one left. I pray for myself. <laughs> Second Chronicles. See, y'all aren't praying for me. That's the problem. Second Chronicles 20, 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. How many know you have an appointment? And who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord. There it is again. For his mercy. Maybe that's the only song we ought to sing. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, 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 now wait. This is, this is a battle and we're sending the musicians out. First. First. It's called target practice.
And there's even that guy with the banner. You know why they had banners? Because they didn't have cell phones. <laughs> they had banners because the generals were up on a hill back over there somewhere. And the generals could see that this division is over here, that division's over there, and the regiment of this division is over here. And every, every group had their own banner and their own flag, and, and that way the generals always knew where everybody was, who was left, who was dead. It was an identifier. That's why one of the names of God is Jehovah Nissi, he is my banner, hallelujah, and he, he bears the banner, and I follow the banner. That was free. You don't have to. I'm not charging you for that. Oh, praise God. But they sent the musicians out first. They have no weapons. I know you feel defenseless sometimes when all you have is a song. How am I going to defeat a devil with a song? Just sing. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes. The Lord set. When you worship, he'll trap the devil. He'll ambush the devil. Oh, Y'all aren't getting excited about this. Against the people of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who had come up against Judah. Judah means, and they were. How about 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15? I'm trying to prove my point. How about when, when the prophet came? He said, they said, hey, we need a word from God. And he said, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't have a word of God until I have a musician. Now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played, say, when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon me. Finding that frequency will bring the hand of God upon you. How about Joshua at Jericho? By the way, let me, let me share this with you. For six days they said nothing. Sometimes you need to shut up. Sometimes you have to go through quiet, hard places because he's setting up the seventh day. And for six days they walked around. And the people in the walls were going, stupid Jews. That don't scare me. That don't scare me. But sometimes the Lord will shut you up. Sometimes he'll quiet. Sometimes he'll take you and he'll just say, hush. Just wait. Just march and wait. And they walked around. One, two, three. How many know there's always one? And as they marched around, about the sixth day, that one said, what are we doing? Shh. Yeah, but really, <laughs> it's been six days of this nonsense. People will criticize you. People will come against you. People will say you're crazy. People will say you don't know what you're doing. Shh. Sometimes you just got to get quiet. But on the seventh day, he said, march. March around seven times and shout. Shout. Listen, what would cause walls? And they didn't, they found this. The walls didn't fall in like they were being pushed. The walls fell out. It's like God just sat into Jericho. He pushed it. Oh, I could preach there a while. Pushed the walls out. What would cause solid rock to vibrate and fall? Vibrations. God will take your song and cause the walls, my last point, to crack and doors to open. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Only one, got a minute. Only one part of the wall didn't fall. Rahab. That's another whole sermon. There's some grace there, honey. 
I am not going to do this for nine months. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> it's coming. I know it's coming. It's going to be good. <laughs> Watch this because hmm, Rahab and her whole family were huddled up. Their, her house was on the wall. Can you imagine being in Rahab's house and the walls are falling to your left and the walls are falling to your right? And everyone's like, ah! And Rahab's like, nah, don't worry about it. See that little piece of rope? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to preach on Rahab. You know I'm going to have to preach on Rahab. She got into the line. She got into the destiny. Jesus came from her. A Moabite, or whatever she was, what? Some kind of ite. How many are still with me? Good, because I'm almost done. Your song will crack walls and open doors. Let me close with you. Come on, singers. Well, let me close with uh, Paul and Silas. And you know we preach that so many times. But as they're sitting in that jail cell, let, let's look at the Scripture, uh, Acts 16, verse 19. But when her master saw that their hope of profit. You see, you know what's, you know what's bothering the world today is that the church First of all, we have too much property that's not being taxed. That really gripes them. And we're, and we're pulling people away from wokeness. And we're taking money from them, as it were. Come on. Their profit was gone. You know why they fight so hard about abortion? Billions of dollars. Their prophet was gone. They seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Go to verse 25. But at midnight, said it, say at midnight. Why at midnight? It's the darkest hour. It's when things look the worst. You're not at the end of the storm. You seem to be in the middle of a storm. But at midnight, Paul and Silas. We're playing card games. Watching Lifetime. No, they were praying and singing. Hey, watch this. Paul says, what are we going to do? Or probably Silas. Silas, what? Paul, what are we going to do? Let's sing. And you know what? You know what's more powerful than you singing in the right frequency? It's two people singing. It's 200. We're, on, we're almost at 200 today in all this cold weather. Listen, it's 200 people singing. That's why while we're worshiping, don't be, don't be doing this. Well, I'll tell you what. If you see me move, you know it's God. No. If we see you move, it'll be a miracle. I don't want to be the last one to move. I'll move with a gentle breeze. Don't need a strong wind. In fact, I'll move and praise you in dead quiet. Paul and Silas began to pray and sing hymns to God. And the prisoners, see, sometimes you're heard first in the natural and then the spiritual. So first the prisoners heard them sing, but the prisoners weren't released yet. It's not about singing a soulish song. It's about finding the right frequency. Oh, my God. Oh, some of you aren't getting this. As they continued to sing, I'm sure some of, the, some of the prisoners said, Oh, that takes me back. Oh, that's a good old hymn. Oh, that reminds me of my mom. My grandma used to sing that, but that's not going to set you free. It's when Paul and Silas, I don't know what they sang, probably all fly away. <laughs> oh, glory. I don't know what it was, but, and it's not about the song. 
It's about the key. We said that, right? This summer I was listening to some birds sing, and they kept singing the same stupid thing over and over. Certain birds have certain songs, right? And they just repeat it over and over and over and over, same old thing. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me while a bird was singing. I said, you can sing the same old song, but if you sing it in the right key, Oh, I feel the Lord. I love this song. But at midnight, the prisoners were listening. Verse 26. Suddenly, say suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Something moved so that the foundations. Why did God, why didn't God just open the gate? Why did he destroy the foundations? He didn't just set them free that day. He made sure they wouldn't lock them back up the next day. Woo! The foundations were shaking and... If you can get your suddenly, God will provide your immediately... And immediately all the doors were opened. And every, if you can get free, maybe your family will get free. If you can get free, your neighborhood will get, if you can get free, those people at work might get free. The doors were open. And everyone's chains were loosed. They were sitting there in Babylon. Hey, Jews, sing us one of your happy songs. Now, what they're really saying is you don't deserve to hear God's songs. That's really what they're saying. You don't deserve it. But church, it's time to quit hanging your harps in the willows. Quit quit giving up. Go up, get your harp. Get your song. Whew. Quit sitting there. You know, that's a weeping willow. <laughs> Quit your crying and moaning and complaining and woo, boo-hooing. It's time to get your harp out of there. I, I, I'm going to go back and get my harp. Let me get my harp. I, this, this is true. Once, once, it's like riding a bike, right? Once, once you learn, you, I mean, it just comes natural. It comes back to you. You, you cannot play for years. I mean, oh, it just comes right back to you. Hello, 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 hello. Whew. I'm coming by this morning to sing. A, how, how many know God sings over us? Isn't that powerful? God sings. And how many know God's always on key? Well, while he's singing over you, if you can catch that song, get into the presence of God. Just, just on the guitars, if you just hit, pluck one string, the string next to it will vibrate, though it was never touched. If you could just touch him. You won't have to find a song. It'll come from heaven. And sometimes it might just be, "Mm -hmm." it might just be, oh, God. Your song might be a groan, but if it's in the right frequency. Stand your feet. Oh, 